I invite you this morning to open up your Bibles with me to the New Testament book of Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 through 12 will be our initial Scripture text. It is on the screen, and I would invite you to stand for the reading of the Word of the Lord this morning. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. I want to speak this morning briefly from the subject, what to do when the world around you is going crazy. What to do when the world around you is going crazy. Look at your neighbor and say, don't go crazy. Look at your other neighbor and say the same thing, don't go crazy. Don't let crazy jump all over you. There's things we must do when craziness is all around us. God bless you as you're taking your seats in the presence of the Lord. It is completely clear beyond any shadow of a doubt, my brothers and sisters, we are living in a world that has gone crazy. We are living in wild times. Irrational, outrageous, outlandish days. I don't have to review any news headlines with you this morning. We are all very much aware of the wars and the battles being waged around us right here in our nation and in the rest of our world. Voices of hatred and hostility. Voices of animosity and accusation. Voices of contention and confusion. Times where for the average American, it's so hard to even discern the truth from a lie. Come on, somebody. Times where the powers that be and the sways of the wannabes have brought us to a place of unprecedented division. No civility or courtesy for each other. No respect or regard for one another. These are chaotic Crazy times we are presently living in. If you believe it, say yes. And what should we be doing as Christians? It's a great question. Well, again, as simple as it may sound, and this is going to be a simple, straightforward message. Are y'all ready? There 
are obvious things we should be doing as the people of God. Number one, as Christians, we should be praying. I thought there would be more of an amen than that. (laughs) Preacher, that's so simple. No. As Christians during these crazy times, we should be people, we should be praying. I was was reminded this week of what God said as it was recorded by the prophet Ezekiel. It's on the screen. God said this, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. It was God, Jehovah, who spoke these words in Ezekiel 22 during a time where Jerusalem had literally gone crazy. The law of God had been... Fact check me, you go to your Bibles, you'll see everything I'm about to say is true and it's in there. The law of God had been profaned. The holy could not be distinguished from the unholy. There was no distinction being made between the clean and the unclean. Filthy lewdness was running rampant in the city of David. Adultery and incest. This is no rated G chapter of Scripture, y'all. It was found there in the city what the Apostle James would later call pure and undefiled religion. James 1.27 in Jerusalem at this time when God is speaking, the fatherless orphan and the widows were being mistreated. Listen to this. The leaders were likened to hungry wolves destroying others for greedy gain. They were mistreating the poor and the needy. They were wrongfully oppressing the foreign stranger, refusing them access to peaceful refuge within Jerusalem's walls. Most of all, God says this, you have forgotten me. And because of all of this and more, God again says, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. What was God looking for? And who was God looking for? He was seeking for someone who would stand in the place of prayer to repent and intercede before God because of the sins of the city. One translation put it this way. God was seeking for someone to repair the altar to pray that God would be merciful. And one of the saddest epitaphs in Israel's history was what God then says next, but I found no one. He was seeking for someone to pray, but he found no one. Eastway family, America has gone crazy. And just like Jerusalem of old, God is seeking for those who will pray. Men and women who will offer repentance before the Lord for our nation's sins. Come on, somebody. Oh, God, help me right here. 
Listen, we have heard so much about building walls to protect our nation, and I agree, I think that we need to protect our borders, but not everyone crossing the border is a criminal. There are innocent men, women, boys, and girls who much like many of us are coming to this nation seeking for a better life and they're longing for some hope and some refuge. I'm all for protecting the borders, but more than that, we are the ones, the watchers who are on top of the walls, who are men and women of prayer, who stand before the Lord in repentance because our nation has gone crazy. We must pray. Look at your neighbor and say, we must pray. Secondly, in a nation and world gone crazy, we must keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Brothers and sisters, our focus cannot be captivated by politics and the promise of politicians. Our focus cannot be captivated by the stock market. Come on, somebody. Or by the news media. Our focus cannot be captivated by government programs in Washington. We must keep our eyes on Jesus. Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer. Jesus, the bread and water of life. Jesus, the only begotten Son of the living God. Jesus, the Holy One of Israel and the head of His church. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus, the only mediator between God and man. Jesus, the Good Shepherd and the Bishop of our souls. Jesus, the Rock and the Fountain of Living Waters. Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the Bright and the Morning Star. Jesus, the great I am and the chief cornerstone. His name is Jesus and he is wonderful and he is mighty and he is the Prince of Peace. We must keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Give the Lord a hand of praise. He's so worthy. Jesus is his name. We must not sink in all the craziness around us. We must focus on Jesus. We must not be tossed around by the false doctrine of this age. Focus on Jesus. We not, must not be overtaken by all the chaos of our time. We got to focus on, brothers and sisters, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes, don't get your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on Him. I grew up, and as I've shared with you, we had a garden every year, and many times, whether it was by the tractor or by the tiller, Brother Hubert, you and I have had this conversation re recently. It was, it was my job to, to break up the earth, till the ground. My daddy taught me early on, son, you want to get this right, you want to plow straight. And so to plow straight, you got to look out beyond the dirt and the ground. And you got to find something to fix your eyes on. And then till with your eyes fixed on that mark. 
and you will till a straight line. Can I tell somebody this morning that focusing on Jesus will help us walk straight? Come on, somebody. Focusing on the Lord will help us walk right will help us talk right, will help us live right, will help us love right. Focusing on the Lord will help us do what He has called us to do during crazy times. we got to keep our focus on Jesus. We must pray. And then thirdly, what the Lord wanted me to share is this. We must stand. In our text, Paul was passionate when he wrote to the Ephesians. He said to them and to us, My brethren, my fellow believers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Whose might is it? Is it your might? Not my might? No, it's His might. Be strong in, in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the methodia is that word, the wiles, the methodia, the cunning schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Brothers and sisters, listen closely. The Christian life is a battlefield, not a playground. It's a battlefield. Not a playground. We haven't come together just a pity pat. I'm telling you, there may be somebody here this morning who's, whose eternal soul is being weighed into balances, and they don't need somebody around them just playing church. Dressed up in your Sunday best with, with nothing else but being seen on your mind. That ain't all it, what it's about. This thing is a battlefield at times. It's not a playground. Some of you might look at me kind of strange because you've kind of believed the doctrine that's going around that when you get saved, that's when all suffering ends. That's not the truth. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Some of you might have heard, well, there's nothing to this spiritual war field or this battlefield for the Christian. Please don't be deceived. You still with me? Say amen. amen. That's why Paul so often uses military verbiages and images. He wanted the first century Christians to understand this. By the way, do you remember where the Apostle Paul was at when he wrote these words? History tells us that he was chained to a Roman soldier as he was writing this letter to the Ephesians. And he himself verifies this by calling himself in Ephesians 6.20. He said, I'm an ambassador in chains. He was in prison. He was going through it. He would, would be chained to a Roman soldiers for 8 to 12 hours only for another one to come. That's, that's how imprisoned he was. But yet he still took the time to write to precious Christians helping them understand that the Christian life is not going to be some playground but at times it's going to be a battle you've got to fight. It's the theme seen in many of his writings. He wrote to the Corinthians, Corinthians using military terms saying this, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but what for the for the what the 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 weapons the weapons the weapons of our what our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds Several times he instructed his son and the Lord Timothy concerning this. He told Timothy and us, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Paul, speaking of himself, even put it this way, I have fought a good fight. Read it with me. I have finished, Paul, a good fight. I have finished my course. I have. Here's the truth, my family. Through Jesus... We have entered into this Christian life with all of its spiritual blessings. But it also has spiritual battles. I mean, I thank God for His peace. Come on, somebody. I thank God for His provision. I thank the Lord for His protection. I thank God for His providential care in every area of my life, for every spiritual manifold blessing that's in His Word, the promises, yes and amen, that are mine. I and you, we have stepped into this because of Jesus and their spiritual blessings. But there's also spiritual battles. You see, Satan has many tactics he uses on the church Yes, I said on the church. To try to defeat us. The Word said in Revelation 12, Tim, that that He accuses. He is the accuser of the brethren who continually accuses before the throne of God. But I, like you, have also read to the end of the book that the Lord God says, but I've handled that. I've dealt with that, and he has been defeated. But still, we're in a warfare. He wants us to fall into prideful condemnation. 1 Timothy 3, 6. Can I tell us all we cannot be puffed up in spiritual pride lest we fall like Lucifer did? It's a spiritual battle. Our enemy seeks to devour, roaming about like a roaring lion. 1 Peter 5 and 8, we're in warfare, y'all. He tries to ensnare us. 2 Timothy 2.26, it's a spiritual battle. He tries to take advantage of the people of God. 2 Corinthians 2.11, it's warfare. Hear me. The enemy will even try to steal this word away from you before you make it home. Mark 4.15. It's a spiritual battle. But here's some good news. Look at your neighbor and say, good news. <laughs> Satan. Pastor, why do you even want to mention his name in the church? We're not giving him no, no glory. We're just ripping the cover off so that you can see. And understands Satan is not eternal like God. He's created. God created Lucifer. He's not eternal like God, so he's limited. He's not all powerful. He's not all knowing. He's not present everywhere. He is limited. You might ask, well, how does he then accomplish so much evil simultaneously throughout the world? It's because he's organized his troops. While we at times in the church, we have our little spats here and there that we, we get divided by the smallest things, 
the enemy is very organized in his approach, pulling his at one third of the angels, fallen angels together and all of his demons and all of his imps, organizing them to wreak havoc around this world and we can't get along in the house of God come on somebody we need to shake ourselves he's organized his kingdom of dark principalities and we'll talk more about this next week the Lord Terry principalities powers Rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. That is where the battle is being waged from. And listen, no matter how our circumstances may look on the outside, our battle, brothers and sisters, is not against human beings. not against each other if it is we're wasting our time fight against people and each other when we ought to be standing together against the devil who seeks to oppose the work of God we must make a stand together with God's help won't you stand to your feet please I told you it's going to be simple. What do we do when the world around us is going? It's been a, it's crazy, y'all. It's crazy. It's crazy. I tell you, in my lifetime, I've never seen a time where there is such a lack of even civility. It just seems like there's that spirit that is just wanting to rip us apart as a nation. And it's not a warfare that we have against flesh and blood. Yes, it does manifest, as I've said many times, in the fleshly realm. Because there are those, believe it or not, listen to what I'm saying, there are those who have given themselves over to the purposes of the enemy. Enemy wants to steal, kill, destroy, divide, and conquer. That's his agenda. So what do we do when our nation and world has gone crazy we must pray look at Geneva say we must pray we must pray by the way this Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock we're coming together and we're we're coming together for a time of prayer standing in the gap I'm telling you you don't want to miss this Wednesday I got some directives from the Lord we're 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 going to go to battle in the name of Jesus in prayer. You might say, well, the battle's not ours. That's true. That's true. But we're engaged as good soldiers. And we can stand together. If one can put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand, what can a group like this do if we come together and truly trust the Lord? We must pray. Again, we must focus on Jesus. God, help us, please. And we must stand together against the enemy. Next week, we're going to look further at what God wants us to do when, when we confront craziness. And we're going to talk about the armor of God and strategies of the enemy and what God has as our directives as good soldiers of the faith. Please don't miss it. But right now, I want us to close... I want us to remember again what Jesus has accomplished. Brother Guy and Sungo, if you'll join me, please, on the platform. I'm putting you on the spot. My brother, sister Iris, would you please join me on the platform?
Kim, can we get a mic? For Thank you, Jesus. Every first, Sister Francis, every first Sunday of the month, we come together and we receive the Lord's Supper Holy Communion. We are a church that celebrates open communion in the sense that you don't have to be a member of this church to receive from the Lord's table. As our guest today, it's our honor to help you remember as we are remembering what Jesus has accomplished. My dear sister, He loves you so much. I don't know you except for just now me. I don't know what you're going through in your life, but here's what I do know. Jesus loves you. He cares about you, everything about you. And He is your answer as He is our answer. Look to Him and lean on Him. Trust in Him. Believe in Him. He's our answer. Amen. We have in our hands the elements, the bread and the juice. Bread representing the broken body of Jesus. Juice representing the shed blood of our Lord. Go ahead and open. If you have not received the elements, simply lift your hand. Our ushers will move in your direction very quickly. Anyone not received the elements yet? As everyone opened them, are you ready to proceed? If you are, say amen. amen. Anyone need some help opening it? We will help you. Amen. Take, take the bread. Sister Iris, would you pray a prayer of blessing? For the body of Christ to be strengthened as we remember what Jesus did for us in the, sh in the brokenness of his body. Most heavenly Father, we thank, thank you, you for Jesus. this opportunity. We thank you, O oh God, for the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for us. Thank you, Jesus. That took away all of our sins, for it was thank there you. that he nailed everything, our sins, our sickness, thank you, everything Jesus. to the cross. His body was bruised for us. And as we take in this wafer, we break it yes. and it symbolizes the body of Jesus that was thank broken you, there on the cross yes. and we take it in Jesus name we thank you receive the wafer representing the body of Jesus thank you Jesus would y'all say that thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for your brokenness that has healed my brokenness thank you Jesus Brother Guy, would you pray a prayer of blessing over the cup? Lord, I thank you for this cup that represents the blood that you shed on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, oh, for in an old covenant, the blood of the lamb, the, uh, the animals, oh God, ox, only cover, only cover, but your blood, oh Jesus, take Jesus. away the sins of the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the blood. Thank, Thank you for allowing, oh God, yourself to go on the tree, oh God, and Thank to be hanged, oh God. For as our elder brother Don said, we're born in sin. And your blood, oh Jesus, came to redeem us. Thank you, Jesus. And as is written in the book of Revelation, we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Yes, Lord. And we are now fighting, oh God, in a position of failure or weakness but we are fighting in a, in a position of authority and power Thank you, because Jesus. of your blood yes lord as we put, we take this cup for all that you say he that drink of your blood has life thank you for the life that you have given us this day thank you for the life that we have in you christ jesus thank you jesus. oh god for is your blood that cover us from the top of our head to the sole of yes, our lord. feet oh father Auto and by your strap we are healed because of your blood in Jesus' mighty Jesus. name. Thank you, Jesus. Let's receive the cup together. Thank you, thank you for your blood, Jesus. Come on, brothers and sisters. Thank him for his blood, his precious blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Sister Francis, I am so sorry. I feel so, I would not do anything in the world to embarrass anybody. I promise you, but I, I feel so drawn. Would you come? Can we pray with you, please? Would you please come, sis? And if there's anyone else in this moment that you have a need in your life that's pressing in all around, crazy times you're going through, and you need some peace and you need some help from Jesus, these altars are open. Would you come? Would you come? Brother Clarence, would you come, please? Amen. Stretch your hands in this direction. God bless you, my sister. Father, right now, Lord, you've given us the privilege to have Francis with us today as our guest. We embrace her with the love of Jesus. Lord, we don't know. God, none of us do what she has faced in previous days leading her to come to the house of the Lord today. But God, we are standing here this morning and I'm praying, God, that you will touch her that you'll bring her comfort, that you'll meet her at the point of every need that she has. And when she leaves this place, she will leave lighter than she came in, Lord, not bearing burdens or cares of life, but strengthened in and by the presence of Jesus. Please, God, touch her, Lord. Touch her, Jesus. Brothers, would you come and stand? I'm going to grab some oil. We're going to anoint our brother. He is going three times a week for kidney dialysis. He's been through a whole lot, has been in the hospital for three months. He's recently gotten out. And here he stands in the house of the Lord. Amen. Stretch your hands this way. Lord Jesus, we still believe that with and by your stripes we are healed. Spiritual healing has come. You have saved our sin-sick souls, but you have also provided in the atoning blood that you shed that there would be miracles of healing, gifts of healing. Lord, I pray that you will just touch our brother today. God, we speak life to the kidneys. We speak life to the... Specifically say that with me. We speak life today in Jesus' name to kidneys that are not functioning at a level they should. Lord, a dialysis machine, Lord, is not going to be the complete total answer. It may be part of the healing journey. But Lord Jesus, we believe that you're able to touch our brother and restore him completely. We ask you to do that. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. Some of you sisters, she, she's left already, but let's... Let's pray for our dear sister who recently has had the strokes. Father, in Jesus' name, total restoration. We pray. No lasting complication from the strokes. We speak life and health in Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. If you're in the house standing back where you're at and you say, Pastor, I have, a, I have a need pressing in around. Just simply lift your hand where you're standing. Lift your hand. There's hand going up. Hands going up all around. Find someone who's got their hands raised and lay your hand on them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus touch Wanda in this moment we speak peace over her body receive his peace Wanda oh his peace is coming in this moment right now thank you God that you're bringing a calm you're bringing a calm and oh thank you Jesus you're speaking peace be still peace be still in Jesus name blood sugar normalize in the name of Jesus breathe him in breathe his presence in Wanda he's here to touch you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord we're doing this work in this moment thank you Lord Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. He's working in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. From the top of her head to the tips of her toes, Lord, your healing virtue, may it flow in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Perfect calm and peace. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, presence of the Lord. Thank you, presence of Jesus. Thank you, presence of the Lord. That's what it's all about, y'all. That's what it's all about. The Lord touching, ministering. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's praise Him with Wanda. Praise is a key. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Kim, begin to sing, lead us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Jesus, thank you for your blood. It reaches. Oh, yes, it does. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your touch today. For thy Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Holy Ghost. 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 Thank you for your touch, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every chance. Oh, thank you for your touch, Jesus. In this moment, meet my sister at the point of her knee. In the name of Jesus, through the power, the presence of God, powerful blood that was shed, Lord, in the name of Jesus, your touch, your touch, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, your will be done. Your will be done. We're not racing out. Your will be done in this place. Is there anybody else that says, hey, God, I need, I need a touch from the Lord. Anybody else here this morning? Don't leave without that touch that you need in the name of Jesus. Stretch a hand towards Sister Justice right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this moment, you lay your hand on our sister. 
You lay your hand on her. Meet her at the point of her physical need. For strength in her body, I pray right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for that touch. Thank you for your touch. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the blood. Gives me strength. Every day. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It will never. Oh, listen. You're dismissed, but let's let's leave singing that song right now. God bless you. Have a great week in the name of Jesus. You're blessed to be a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Pray, focus on the Lord and stand.